everyone, today's video is going to be a tortoise anatomy video and I'm just going to touch on some of the main um, parts of a tortoise and just tell you a little bit more about them and I thought this would be quite an interesting video and obviously I'm not going to mention everything um, but I thought I'd just do the basics so I'm here with Sheldon Sheldon is a 2010 hatchling so he's coming up to four years old He's an Eastern Herman tortoise. So I get a lot of questions asking how big he is. And um, he's actually nowhere near full grown. He'll probably be full grown at about 10 to 12 years old. Um, but their growth rate depends on their diet and their husbandry rather than their age. So that does all depend. But he's actually really, really tiny. Um, he's a very small species. Of tortoise he's about four inches from his bit here to basically his shell length is about four inches so he's a pretty small species and I do call him he although we have actually recently worked out that he is a girl so <laughs> I'm trying to get used to calling him her um, which will take a while because we've had him quite a long time and I'm very used to saying he so I think we are actually going to be thinking of a new name for him quite soon as well um, because Sheldon doesn't really suit him anymore knowing that he's a girl. But there we go. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is their shell. And the shell is probably the most distinctive feature of a tortoise. Um, their shell provides them great protection from predators but it also limits their movement. Um, and it's also quite heavy for them to lug around so it means that they can't move too quickly so the top view here this part is called the carpus and these sections here are called scoots so the scoots all have different names and I'm going to take a look at the main ones um, so this up here is the neutral we have the coastal the vertebral and the marginal around here and then we have the supracordial scoot here. So if we take a look underneath which he's not going to like very much good boy. This here is the plastron we have the gula, the humeral, the pectoral, the abdominal, the femoral and the anal scoots. So a tortoise's shell is made up of keratin and although the top layers of the shell are dead the bottom layers are actually living and they do contain blood vessels so um, <laughs> so they do actually have some feeling in their shell um, and it's also very important not to ever put anything on their shells um, never to paint them or anything like that um, for several reasons but mainly that um, it means they have a greater chance of developing shell rot it can also affect um, the growth of the shell and they seem to regulate temperature through their shell um, they absorb heat through their shell so if there's something on their shell then it's obviously going to block them <laughs> from absorbing that heat and um, if they had black paint on um, their shell then it would absorb much more heat and cause them to become a lot hotter and if they had white paint then it would reflect all the um, heat so yeah it's best not to ever put anything on their shells so it's also important to note that all the different species of tortoise are going to be slightly different and um, within the species as well there are subspecies so um, for example Sheldon is a Herman tortoise and um, within the Herman tortoise there are Eastern, Western and Dalmatians um, but I don't think Dalmatians are an accepted breed anymore um, but Sheldon is an Eastern Herman tortoise so they're all going to be slightly different they're all going to have slightly different characteristics and markings and things like that and <laughs> and um, yeah they're all going to be slightly different um, hingebacks for example have an ability to actually fold their shell um, over their back legs so they have like a little hinge underneath um, hence the name. So they all are all going to be slightly different. So if we take another look at the scoots, which are these parts here, they should be pretty flat and domed. Sheldon's not cooperating. <laughs> he wants to go off and do his own thing. 
Um, so they should be pretty flat and slightly domed and this depends largely on their diet. Um, <laughs> they must be provided adequate quantities of vitamin D and calcium and poor diet and husbandry can cause these scoots here to become raised and they kind of go like that and that's called pyramiding um, which is probably the most common disease affecting pet tortoises and um, it is really damaging it's not only the scoots it affects it can also um, affect the bone density and become and cause them to become more soft and spongy um, a similar thing to osteoporosis in people so it is really severe and a proper diet is essential. I do have a Mediterranean tortoise diet video available on my channel which I'll link in the description bar. And although I do have that video up I would also always recommend that you do your own research um, as things are always changing all the time, information is always changing and also you want to find um, the best diet suitable for the species of tortoise that you own. So your tortoise's shell will also be able to tell you about the microclimates within the enclosure. Um, keratin, which is what um, the tortoise's shell is made up of, it becomes inflexible when it dries out. Um, so if your tortoise's shell is really, really hard and stiff, and <laughs> um, it, it, it can indicate low humidity. Um, and on the other hand, if there's too high humidity in your enclosure, it can become really soft and flexible um, so you do need to take a look at the humidity levels of your tortoise's natural environment and try and recreate that as best as you can in their enclosure. So you can also see growth rings here on these scoots and this is similar to a tree, tree trunk um, and it just shows how the shell has grown basically but they can't show the age of the tortoise very well because the shell growth rate does depend on so many variables such as a proper diet and the environment um, but <laughs> Sheldon's not even cooperating come back okay so if we take a look at their tail again he's not going to like this very much um, there is an opening there on his tail which don't kill me if I say this wrong but is the cloaca which they use for pooing, urinating, mating and laying eggs. I'm sorry, I'll put you back. <laughs> he doesn't like being upside down very much. Um, tortoises don't do very well on their backs um, and if they can't self-right then they can actually die from being on their backs but it's not as quick a death as people um, seem to think. Um, it does take them, they can be on their backs for quite a while and be fine um, but it does cause them to become very stressed and um, if they can't self-right then it does put pressure on their organs and things like that so they don't do very well on their backs um, but yeah so if we take a look now at his head um, their head contains a toothless jaw and a beak um, where their kind of nose is and Sheldon's beak is really nice and trim but they can actually become overgrown so um, what I do is I provide Sheldon with a cuttlefish or a cuttlebone like this and um, they basically just chew on this and it helps to keep their beak down and it also provides them with some essential calcium so that's a really really good addition to a tortoise enclosure and he absolutely loves it and it's helped his beak stay really nice and trim which is great. Aww. So those holes there are his nares right above his lip and they're used for smelling and breathing um, basically the same as our nostrils and I think tortoises have fairly good sense of smell. Um, some species such as redfoots are actually believed to leave scent trails to find their way back to shelters or food um, in environments when the, where there isn't very many visual landmarks but so they are considered to have a fairly good sense of smell and sight as well and taste um, they're fairly good all round with their senses really Aww. something that I find fascinating about tortoises as well is the way that they breathe um, because they can't expand and contract their chest in the same way that we do 
because their ribs are fixed, I think they're actually fused to their shell, um, but because they've got a hard shell here, they can't breathe in the same way that we do with our chest um, moving up and down. So what they actually do is pull their legs in um, to contract their lungs, to compress them basically, and then they pull their legs out again. And when they're standing still, you can actually see them bobbing, but Sheldon is not standing still. Um, but it looks like they're shrugging their shoulders, um, but you can't really see it with Sheldon because he's running around. Um, but I find that really, really fascinating, um, the way that they breathe. So if we take a quick little look at his legs here, um, he's just got his front legs and his back legs, although they probably do have proper names. Um, and he does have claws there, and the claws again will vary slightly between the tortoises, but these can actually become overgrown as well, and I don't cut my tortoises' nails, um, I don't really believe that you should need to. Um, what I do is just provide him with lots of different rocks and things in his enclosure to walk around over. He loves climbing, um, so any sort of rock he'll climb over. Um, so lots of people provide slate and um, just different um, textures of rocks and that will help to wear down their nails, especially if you put it in a really used area like under their food bowl or um, near their water or something like that. Um, I do also have a patio in my garden and when he goes out to play in my garden on nice days um, oh, I'll actually um, put him on the patio as well for him to run around there and it will scratch his nails down a little bit more um, so they keep nice and trim so I, don't, I haven't needed to cut his nails at all <laughs> Bye! So you can see here on the leg that um, tortoises are covered in protective scales and oh sorry Sheldon and these are made of keratin as well the same as the shell and these are just used again for protection and tortoises do actually shed but not in the same way that a snake would um, they don't shed it all off in one go they just kind of get little bits flaking off and um, if Sheldon will show you on his head I'm sorry he doesn't really, he jumps sometimes, um, but he does actually have a little flake on his neck um, that's waiting to come off, but if you do see their skin um, kind of flaking off, just leave it, um, don't pick it, um, because it could be quite painful for them, but just leave it and it will flake off in time. So when Sheldon came to live with us, um, he did have really, really flaky skin um, and it looked quite sore but um, just with regular soaks, um, he gets soaked um, a few times a week and it just started to soften up and um, his skin's a lot healthier now since we've had him. Um, I think it's primarily that we've put him on um, a good diet and he gets lots and lots of sun and he's just a lot healthier now. <laughs> and here you can see that he's pulling his legs in and out and this is the breathing that I was talking about. Um, by pulling their legs in, they compress their lungs. Um, so it's kind of a similar thing to our chest rising and falling. So that's how they manage their breathing. I think it looks like they're doing a little dance. <laughs> so I think that's pretty much it for the main external features um, <laughs> that you can see on a tortoise. And um, thank you to Sheldon for helping us. He's been a wonderful model. And if you have any girl tortoise name ideas, um, because we are considering changing his name to a proper girl's name, considering he is a girl. <laughs> um, so I need to get used to saying she instead of he. And if you have any tortoise name ideas, then leave them down below. I'd love to know what you all think. And we'll try and decide <laughs> a proper girl name fairly soon. Oh, you're so pretty. You're so pretty. So thank you all for watching and I'll try and get more tortoise informational videos done soon. Um, they just take quite a lot of planning and making sure I say everything right. So, <laughs> so I don't do them all very often because I haven't had much time recently but I will be doing much more in the future and I've got lots planned. 
and I'll just put him next to the ruler for you so you can see how big he is because I've had loads of people asking. There we go, look. Can I sit on the ruler? How big are you? <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Bye!